All right, well, since the AMX is currently being tuned and it's probably going to be gone for a week or so, I um, thought it would be a good time to do some work to the Gremlin. I did get the uh, old AMX seats installed in the Gremlin, so they work a lot better. But, um, you know, it's got drum brakes on it. They work okay. I never did sell these disc brakes off the AMX, so uh, I said, what the heck. Let's see if we can get some disc brakes thrown on this Gremlin to make it a little bit better. So uh, that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. So, uh, you know, first thing I'm going to have to do is get the car jacked up and get the wheels off and start comparing parts and see if it's even going to work. Now, obviously, if you're going to try to put a 68, 69, I think even maybe 70 disc brake conversion on your 70 grim one, you know, you got to have all the parts. Which luckily I have the everything, spindles and the whole kit and caboodle here. So um, I don't see a reason why it won't work. But, um, you know, try it with one wheel first and, you know, just get kind of everything put on. The drum, if you watch previous videos, the spindles, I mean, the only difference is, is the actual height of the base plate here. There's about an eighth inch more on, uh, I think, on the drums versus the disc brake spindles. But um, um, anyway, so like I said, if you got everything, then this should be a pretty easy swap. If you don't have everything, you know, I really don't know. So we'll get started with this wheel and then we'll move on to the next one and I think every tie rod on this car is probably shot. But uh, surprisingly the steering, wheel, the steering doesn't seem too loose but uh, probably going to be putting tie rods on it. Next. Okay after you get your drum brake off there now these studs are going to, bolts are going to be too short but um, I don't want to pull them off because this can be kind of a bear to get back on sometimes. So I just left them on there as a guide. So these disc brakes, I don't know why, but they have two shims on each side. And like I said, I have no idea why they do. Now these parts, it's tough to tell, but they actually tell you what side they go on. I think that's an L right there for the left hand side. So that goes on like that, and then this actually has a LH right here, so for the left hand. Now this isn't a perfect square either, he's kind of actually a rectangle, so it only goes on one way for you. But um, so all that goes on, and then um, your spindle goes on, just making sure I got everything on here I think proper. I could have this on backwards. We'll have to do a little checking on that but um, this plate actually might go all the way on first. But uh, let me do some looking at it and see what goes on and how everything goes on and then uh, then I'll tell you how it all goes together. Alright, pretty simple. Like I said, I just pulled bolts out. They're all different lengths. Um, it's two longer ones and kind of two shorter ones. But I just pulled them out and slid them through. So it goes as the two plates, the caliper bracket itself, the spindle, then the dust cover. Um, <clears throat> now I didn't have the factory things to hold the brake lines. I actually made these myself. And I don't really know how they attach, but um, I attach them to this um, front bottom bolt here, so I guess don't forget to attach that however it attaches if you have it If you don't you can easily make that I just took a piece of You know inch and a quarter I don't even know what gauge that is um, metal and just Twisted it and cut a little hole in it and a notch and I even have the Clips to go into the rubber part of the brake line to hold it in there. It's worked pretty good, so um, next step is going to be is getting everything greased up, 
and getting the rotor put on or the hub put on and then uh, then the rotor and then the caliper. Now generally these hard brake lines will break. Um, usually not too bad getting them off but they'll actually break there on the metal because they're seized to the brake line itself but I always just douse them down in some WD-40 and work them back and forth until they're not stuck and if need be you can stick a little pair of pliers on that steel line just don't crush it and kind of hold it so you can work your uh, wrench back and forth. So we're getting pretty close. This side's pretty much done. Um, so you put your, uh, you don't generally, you know, knock your studs out, but I had uh, longer studs on the AMX for um, some of the things I was qualifying for on run racing, so I had to have extended lugs on the rear and the front, but um, your hub, you know, goes on, your rotor goes on the back side of your hub, so you got to put your rotor on before you put your hub on, is what I'm getting at. So uh, I pressed all the studs back in uh, using a hammer because I don't have a press. And uh, got that all on, two bolts that hold the caliper on. I don't know if we're even going to be able to see them, but they're... Got a big one back in there. And uh, you know, pretty simple. Four bolts that hold all the hub and everything, all the spindle and everything on. And then uh, your regular nut lock, uh, cotter pin and split pin, whatever you want to call it. And then a couple bolts hold your caliper on. My homemade uh, line holder like I said and I just used the regular clips to hold it together and I had to make this line myself and then I'm gonna hook the rubber line up to that and this side's pretty much done and I'll move on to the next side and then we'll see if we can even get them bled with the uh, master cylinder it's in this grim one um, but then on these Bindex front rotors you have to use a uh, a uh, spacer and they're actually up there I think those are a quarter inch is what I had to use on the uh, on any wheel even the 15 inch wheels I had on here I still had to use that spacer because if you don't they'll hit this and I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that the factory there was a spacer set up on these anyway so um, you will have to have some wheel spacers if you don't have them to run 14 15 I don't know about 16 inch rims, but uh, I know those you have to have them. They won't clear the caliper. So, all right, well, I'm going to get this one all buttoned up and uh, we'll get to the other side, get that done, and we'll see if we can't get some brakes bled. All right, well, it's been a few days since, the, since I kind of recorded that uh, driver's side, removing the disc brakes and putting them on. Um, anyways, it's all done on this side and brakes are bled and all that good stuff and I have driven it a little bit and they're working just fine and of course the, it just got done down pouring so imagine that um, anyways so they bled fine before anybody gets excited or starts telling me on Instagram or anything else I know this is a drum brake master cylinder and uh, disc brake one I believe has a bigger front reservoir but for the disc brakes but yeah I don't know I just know that they're working fine this car isn't a boosted car so there might be a pretty big difference or something if you had a booster on them but um, they haven't faded or acted up or acted strange or anything like that with me so um, but uh, but anyways, driver side or sorry, passenger side went on just as easy as the driver side. No problems there. Brake lines, clips, everything like that. You can tell on this rotor here, there's a lot more heat wear from these brakes trying to stop the AMX. But um, um, I had to get some new wheel studs. For this side, this is an original one. The other ones are 
slightly longer but pretty much work the same and uh, they look a little crooked but I don't know why they tightened up just fine or that one looks crooked for some reason but anyways um, I jacked it back up took the wheel off because I ran out of grease and I was gonna grease the ball joints on this side I already did them on the driver side and everything but but uh, they're working good. Better than them sitting in a basket since they never sold. And I don't want them sitting in a basket forever. And I don't feel like relisting them everywhere. So, um, And I'll uh, explain about the drum brakes here. And Alright, well anyways. If, here's the drums that came off of the Gremlin. Which are in really super good shape. I think uh, somebody actually had turned these drums and did some brake work prior to me getting the car, but uh, just sat forever. I did hone and put new cups and springs and stuff in the wheel sills, or sorry, wheel cylinders, and uh, did some other stuff to it. But uh, all these brake parts, a guy can still get new. But anyways, my point of showing you this stuff is. Um, if you need some uh, good drum, 9 inch drums and back plates and all this fine AMC parts here, uh, let me know because uh, I don't have the space to keep hold on to parts and um, I'd assume if somebody really needs them, you can have them for the price of shipping. So um, that's either that or you know they'll go to the scrap pile eventually. But I hate throwing stuff away but... I also am not very big on keeping a lot of stuff laying around either so just uh, throwing that out there to you if you're watching this video and you know it's six months down the line if you want to know I'll put in the description if I've sold them or not so if they're still available they'll, they'll still be it'll, it'll just not say anything in the description um, if they're gone I'll put that they're gone so you're not wondering if you missed out or not. So, alright, well anyways, the purpose of this video is just to kind of show that uh, you can put 68 Bindex 4 piston caliper disc brakes. I think they made them 68, 69, and 70. And you can put them on pretty much any AMC, I think. Uh, you can on, in this case anyways. And obviously you should do it the right, correct way and get the right uh, master cylinder. But... Um, for what I'm doing, they seem to be working fine. I had no no braking problems, no brake failures or anything. Everything feels fine and they're working just fine. So they're actually working a little bit better than these. But, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of front drums, so they probably need to be adjusted better. But I was having a hard pulling. It would pull harder on one to the driver's side than it would to the passenger side. And, I know these are supposed to be self-adjusting, but you know, I don't know that much about them, so that's why I went ahead and put the Bendex disc brakes on there. Well, that, and they didn't sell, and I didn't want them laying around in milk crates forever, so these can sit in some milk crates here for a while, and like I said, if you need them, let me know. But uh, All right, well, thanks for watching this episode, and... Uh, Hopefully we'll get the AMX here, get it back here soon, and the weather hopefully will start clearing up to where we can actually go drive and start getting some stuff filmed that's a little bit more entertaining than me just standing in my garage all the time. But because of COVID and everything else, everything's pretty limited still. So, all right, but well, we'll see you in the next episode.